Greetings from all of us here at Lake Region Healthcare and Prairie Ridge Hospital and Health Services. I'm Tom Rufer, and today we're going to be speaking with Kent Matson, our Enterprise CEO, Dr. Josh Overgaard, our Chief of Staff and one of our internal medicine physicians, and Dr. Joe Dinsmore, one of our emergency medicine physicians. Because we are very concerned about what we are hearing from people questioning the necessity of recommendations around social distancing, isolation, work from home, event cancellations, school closures, and other measures being taken to mitigate the threat that we are facing from COVID-19, we'd like to dispel some rumors and provide some guidance as your trusted local health care provider. A few key questions that we are going to be addressing are, why is social distancing important to your hospitals? What is social distancing? And why is time of the essence? First, we'll be speaking with Dr. Joe Dinsmore. Doctor, many people have heard the White House and the Surgeon General talk about the 15 days to slow the spread. Why is time of the essence here? When you look at the numbers and growth of the spread, we are at a critical point in time to make a difference in terms of slowing that spread. Surgeon General Jerome Adams reminds us that when you look at the projections, there's every chance that we could be Italy if we don't take action now. What happened in Italy, what is currently happening in Italy is that some of their hospitals have become um, overrun in terms of the number of patients that they uh, have, have experienced um, who are ill with uh, the coronavirus um, that is spreading around the world right now. And that impacts not just patients who are ill with the coronavirus, but also everybody else who would normally be coming to the emergency department with uh, similar or other complaints that are, are typically uh, within the community. Um, but if we learn from these other countries and take action now to so-called flatten the curve, that means um, decrease the number of people who are ill with this illness uh, simultaneously, um, we can slow the progression before it's too late. Thank you, Doctor. And now I'm joined by Dr. Josh Overgaard. As you can see, we are maintaining the correct social distancing still at this time. Dr. Overgaard, can you provide some clarity on what social distancing in this instant means? For example, if kids are off school and they want to have a sleepover with their friends, as long as they maintain the six foot distance during the play date or sleepover, is that okay? That's a good question, Tom, and I'm happy to try to answer it. Unfortunately, in this situation, there are a lot of things that we do know, but also don't know about how this is spread and what our risk is. Um, but what our scientific data is telling us to start with is that it's very easy to transmit this illness and people can do it when they're not feeling any symptoms of illness. You may not feel ill, but still be able to transmit that to other people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have this heightened concern over people having contact with one another. So it's not an easy thing to talk about, and it's, it's an awful thing to have to suggest. Mm -hmm. But we're concerned that the more people are around each other, the more easily this will spread. And we'll be faced with that situation that Dr. Dinsmore mentioned that they have in Northern Italy, where hospitals are overwhelmed and they're having to pick who gets a ventilator, who doesn't, who gets medicine and who doesn't, because their resources are so thin. Um, so the current recommendations really is, um, in addition to the school closings and some of those mandated um, efforts at reducing public gatherings. Um, the recommendation is not to have gatherings of 10 or more people. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, um, really, it's hard to it's hard to put a it's hard to put a solid kind of a number or or idea around this. But really, any interpersonal contact in person that's not needed mm -hmm. should be avoided. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of gray in there, but things like sleepovers, having people over for dinner, things of that nature, play dates are really off the list. And that's not something that's going to be government mandated or, or anything of that nature. But those are things that I think people should really think about limiting mm -hmm. to what degree they're able. Yeah, I understand. All right, thank you. And now we've got Kent Matson, our enterprise CEO. Kent, why should we feel so strongly about getting this message out and pleading our communities to take action? Why is this so important to our community hospitals? I think, uh, Tom, why it's important to the community hospitals is that we're trying to conserve resources. Um, and as you've heard from our physician partners, uh, we're concerned about the spread of the illness and that if too many people get the illness at one time, our resources aren't going to be able to take care of the critically ill people. Uh, we've got hospitals and clinics uh, in nine communities in our area. We're a community-based hospital organization. Um, we want to make sure that our resources are preserved to take care of the critically ill. Um, and right now, from what we're hearing from the experts, 
Uh, we've got a wave of uh, folks that are gonna get uh, infected with this disease. And we wanna make sure that our assets, our people, um, and our facilities and supplies are protected to take care of the critically ill. So we're just asking the communities that we serve to come together to um, uh, socially distance yourselves um, so that we can slow the spread, uh, flatten that curve, and we can be prepared to take care of the folks that we know uh, are going to get sick and, and need to rely on us. Thank you. To those of you watching, please, on behalf of all of us here at Lake Region Healthcare and Prairie Ridge Hospital and Health Services, read the article that accompanies this video on our website, along with Dr. Dinsmore's well-written blog on the topic. Share these articles and this video on your social media feeds and heed the warnings. Dr. Dinsmore summarized it well in his article, and I'll close by quoting him and leave you with this thought. If our efforts at social distancing are ultimately successful and the worst case scenarios are avoided, we know there will be a temptation to believe this is all an unnecessary panic. It is so important to understand that it is not. If our efforts to flatten the curve are effective and healthcare systems do not become overwhelmed, it will still be a very long road ahead before a return to normalcy. If we are lulled into complacency and people become impatient, our efforts to flatten the curve can quickly be undone if proper social distancing halts too abruptly. This is going to be hard for all of us in a way that no living person has comparative experience. This is our shared humanity. Stay safe and take care of each other. Thank you.